So why am I buying the 2024 Toyota Tacoma? I'm gonna fill you in and we're gonna do a little removal while we're at it. So to get started on this, I'm taking out the aux beam switch because I am gonna use it on the 2024 eventually. And let me say, on the 2024, I'm still in no hurry. And it's not a done deal yet. So it's possible that I'm just gonna restart with this truck because that's the other thing in the back of my mind. Remove everything off of it that I can. I mean, I can't take the bumper off, obviously, unless I really want to go crazy with something new. Uh, but otherwise, most of the mods that uh, are removable, I'm going to remove just in anticipation of either purchasing the 2024 or starting over with the 2023. Now, why? That's a good question. But before I get into that, we're going to go ahead and take the negative ground off of the... Uh, box beam switch here so I can depower this thing because obviously I'm not looking to shock myself while I'm doing this so we're just gonna pull this ground off it's a little greasy I don't know why I think it's because I'm using the same bolt uh, that I use, let's see, let's get this wire out of the way. I really don't want to contact anything with it because then I will go to ground again and I don't want to do that. All right, so I got that off. Let's go ahead and put this screw back in before I lose it somewhere. One thing I love about the aux beam system is it's very simple. I mean, you have a ground and a positive, and that's it. I mean, that's what powers the system, right? This is a 12 millimeter socket, by the way. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the positive side. Make sure I'm not touching ground anywhere. And I'm not. All right, so why am I buying the 2024? Uh, first of all, I like it. I drove it, and I have to say, I was impressed by its power, its acceleration, the comfort of it, how it felt on the road. I mean, it felt really good. I really liked the truck. I think uh, from a, a power, acceleration, and uh, comfort standpoint, it is a definite improvement over the 2023. Now, there's a couple of things I didn't like. One was that it didn't have power seats. I think um, Toyota's making a mistake. I think when they had them out there in the TRD version, and then to get rid of them, it's an obvious ploy to make you buy packages and spend more money, right, if you want power seats. Fortunately for me, I'm the only one that drives the truck. So I don't really need power seats. It's not a big deal. I kind of set them where I like it or set it where I like it and then forget about it. I never change them again. So not a big deal. Now, getting back to this, we need to remove the cover here, which just kind of pulls right off with a clip. It's pretty easy. And then there is a line uh, right here uh, that I have all tied up under there, but it plugs in right here right here on the, uh, the switch. So I need to unplug that because I want to take the whole guts of the switch out and then I'm going to either pull this in through the inside or pull it out. I'll probably pull it out once I disconnect it from the control panel inside. So to do that, again, it's pretty simple. It just has a little clip on it and it pulls right up just like that. That's how it's released. And then I kind of have it woven through here a little bit so I'm going to pull it through the slot the slot that is in the uh, tray I guess so you can do just this and that takes it through to where it's free from the uh, tray itself now holding the tray in is a little bracket here that I kind of made and it's held in by screws so what I need to do is remove that bracket and 
I think what I did is uh, screwed it in via these two screw holes that were already in the truck. I didn't drill anything. No drilling was done on this. So they're just Phillips head. I should, famous last words, let's see if I can get into this one. I don't want to damage anything doing this. So let's see if I can actually manage to turn it. I don't know if I can get enough leverage on it. Um, it appears not. I put that one in pretty tight. Let's try this one. No. So what I'm going to do is grab a wrench, uh, hopefully, and use it to turn the screwdriver and pull it off. Um, I mentioned there's another thing I didn't like about the 2024, uh, and that's kind of the some of the materials on the inside. They look a little cheap. Uh, I can't think of a better word. They look a little cheap or even kind of cartoonish. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, but I don't think it's an improvement over the 2023 the, or the third gen in whole. Uh, but again, it, it's not so bad that I don't really like it. So that doesn't hold me back. Uh, it's not something that uh, I would say no to. I do wish at least the version I looked at would have had the bigger screen in it. Uh, I think I probably will end up getting a smaller screen. That's not a deal killer either. I mean, it would be nice to have the bigger screen, but I'm not willing to step up and package and pay another, who knows, two, three, four, five grand to get that and the power seat. Not going to do it. There's one more thing that I, I really can't understand and, and don't like either. We're going to get into that in just a second. All right, here's a little trick for you if you weren't aware. Um, a lot of screwdrivers will fit a 7 8 wrench um, and then you can get more leverage on it right I happen to have one that does so simply put it in the screw you're trying to break free and turn and there you go that breaks that screw free and will allow me to go ahead and remove them and it really was pretty simple so now I don't need the wrench anymore I should be able to hopefully Go ahead and turn these screws out. All right, should be able to just lift this out of here now, hopefully. And no, there's one more thing. Uh, we have a wire connected here that, I forgot about this, that uh, is an ignition type wire. And what that does is when the truck is not powered on, the switch here is not powered on. So I need to crawl inside and disconnect that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it here so that uh, I can go ahead and pull this out. And there you have it. That takes care of the uh, switch guts itself. Now to take care of the wiring inside. So we have this one removed. Next I have to remove the other wire which i believe plugs into the back of the control head so i need to pull the panel inside and this is an aftermarket panel that had a slot you'll see in a second for the control panel so we're going to pull that but first the other thing i i didn't like about there's more than one really but uh about the new 2024 tacoma is the rear sliding window or lack thereof uh, in the model I drove, which was a TRD Sport, it does not come uh, in that trim model anymore unless you pay for an upgrade, a package. Again, something that Toyota is doing with this new truck. I think it's nuts. They're taking things away again and charging us if we want to add them back instead of having them be part of a standard trim level, if you will. Not a big deal for me, again, not a deal killer because... I can't think of the last time I actually used the one that I have in this current truck. Nonetheless, that's just something else they've taken away. Let me show you that panel inside. We're going to pop it and uh, move on. Okay, the panel I'm talking about, of course, uh, is right here where the aux beam control head is housed. This is just held on by, I guess, friction clips. I don't know what you call them but it will pop out now i will tell you that it did not fit perfectly in here when i got it so um i imagine it might be a little difficult to pop out we're gonna see um you just want to get an edge really 
and kind of pry it out of there. All right, we got the uh, panel off. These are my garage door opener wires I cut. That's my own mod, not part of the truck. Um, fortunately, Oxbeam did put a quick release connector on here, and that allowed me to not have to pull the plug part that plugs into the switch panel under the hood, but rather just to pull through this little piece, which I put it through, I could pull it back through, and it pulled out very easily. So, lastly, uh, I need to transfer um, the, the switches here to the old switch panel. This is what it looks like from the back, by the way. I'm going to leave the aux beam one in here really just for protection, and then I'll connect up the wire just to protect it as well, and that's it. So, let's go over to the workbench, and we'll get into this, and then we'll finish up on the 2024. Uh, why am I getting it? All right, we have the OEM piece here, and we have the, let's see, it's Stamp Guild Outfitters piece here. I think I called it something else earlier. Comes from Guild Outfitters. Um, like I said, I'm gonna leave the aux beam panel in here. It's a perfect fit, but I have to remove all these other buttons and relocate them down here to the panel. So, this first one, the biggest one, and this is the door or the, uh, backlight I guess in the bed. This one has a couple little nubbies on the edges here. You kind of want to pry this one a little bit to get it out. So you just want to move the uh, edges of it gently. You don't need to do much. And then it will push out. Gotta get your hands in there too. Like that. That's all there is to it. Uh, then you want to make sure you orient it properly to get it back in like so and then just push it back in like that you heard the little snap that one is done the others are done a little bit differently they have a squeeze together which i prefer uh kind of prong on them so we're just gonna squeeze that together easier said than done i think and then they push out towards the outside like so Got everything switched over, including my little garage door opener hack. Uh, everything fits in there in a specific location, so you really can't mess it up. And just so you know, when I do trade this truck off, I'll be replacing this with just a regular blank like this, except longer. So now we just have to put this back in the truck, and then we're going to finish up on the 2024. Why am I really getting it? Back here at the truck... Just a matter of connecting everything back in. Uh, this is, as I've mentioned, not complicated. We're going to start with the bottom one here. Pretty easy. It is a plug-and-play uh, application here. So, and you can hear that lovely sound, which of course is the clicking of connectors. You always want to hear that sound. Now, I just need to push this back in. And I'm going to try to do it from the top and the bottoms. And that's it. That puts everything back the way it's supposed to be. Okay, finished with this uh, removal, I guess. So, the big question, why am I really getting the 2024? Because I am a modder and it's time for a clean slate. Whether it be... On the 2023, if I can't get the 2024 I want due to supply and price and all that stuff, uh, or I just decide, you know, it's a pretty good looking truck. I might just go ahead and keep modding this, start over again. But honestly, I'm looking forward to a clean slate and seeing what the 2024 has to offer as far as mods and things go, and then my experiences with it. I've had a lot of comments from people on the channel that I should get this truck so that they can decide if they want to get the truck. In other words, what my experiences are for it. I'm going to give you that, hopefully. Anyway, appreciate you guys joining me. A little different kind of video today, kind of combining it with uh, a mod removal, if you will. Leave a comment. Let me know. Do any of these reasons or those reasons make you feel better or worse about the 2024? I'd just be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.